Hey guys, ESA Bam, and I'm here joined by the great Cheesy Strides. Oh, that's quite an intro. Yeah, man. Pretty thanks good, right? You. Yeah. Uh, thanks for <laughs> that <laughs> wonderful green. It's been a while since I've uh, been on the show, but yeah. a lot of changes last time I was uh, on here. There's a lot of interesting things happening in Smash, as usual, specifically Smash 4. Yeah. Uh, this past weekend, Naro, in my opinion, running the best like Smash 4 losers run. Probably Smash in general, one of the best uh, in the games. Like, oh yeah, span, yeah, no, easily, dude. like easily. And let's go ahead and showcase that video, man. Let's see what Nairo is doing right now. Oh yeah, oh this is yeah. definitely the, one of the highlights of time. Oh here. yes, without a doubt, dude. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And this, this part is the best part. This is the best part. Yo, point out. Make sure they know. Make sure the crowd knows, man. <laughs> Just, beautiful. Yeah, amazing job there by Nairo. And this it's a crazy because he has always been such a very very capable player. A lot of people actually liken him to being the kind of the if not Isaiah, the the mango of Smash 4. He yes. has a huge following, super cult following. Like you have all these people he calls his followers Naifus. If you guys didn't know, now you know. Yeah. And <laughs> Naifu Nation, Nation is man. crazy. Naifu Nation like, is nuts. Yeah, they're actually insane. They're like, all insane. You want, people can talk yeah. about Mango Nation. He has a very like super eclectic following. Yeah. Very similar to yes. Nairo's following. Yeah. So Whenever Nairo is like top eight in general, the crowd just they go nuts. Man. Yeah, go they go absolutely nuts. And uh, I think it's it was great for Nairo because uh, kind of like to bring this back and then bring this one home. It was something where people right now like you're starting to see Nairo kind of come up to like that top level like once again. I mean, I'm saying once again, but he never necessarily no. left. But, I mean, he is, again, like, he is, like, the way he was playing, he was blowing people out yeah, of the water. Yeah, that was definitely best zero suit play I've seen in Smash 4 yeah, that weekend. Easily, easily. Um, his play, like, for him, personally, that's, like, the best I've seen now play. And he's, like, a top player. Yeah. So, the fact that he was able to elevate the, the play even higher is just, yeah. I don't know, he was on the super zone. Yeah. Um, it's really cool, too, like, you can... Again, the lacking them to Mango. Mm -hmm. Feel both of them are players yep. that like excel when there's more like uh, odds like stacked. Exactly. Like, they don't the necessarily pressure, yeah. the, the pressure actually like, like fuels them. 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 Yep. Like if you want to talk about the clue you just saw, that was when Nairo was down 2-0 yeah. in the losers. Like he was he was one game away yep. from just being eliminated yep. completely. And back against the wall, he turns up a whole new level, gets the reverse 3-0, silencing the entire crowd. Yeah, that was in a Wadi's hometown in Diego. Yeah. The entire crowd cheering against him, cheering for the 3-0. Yep. Like, he just went on a whole, like, ballistic comeback from there and just ran it all the way to grand finals to beat zero yeah. in two sets. Twice. Crazy game 10 yeah. set. Uh, I don't know. It's just something that only Nairo's proven that uh, he's capable of at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I truly believe that was actually the best um, – that was the best losers run we've actually seen in Smash 4 history. I don't know when we're going to see something quite like that. The only loss he had was as loss to Radea, uh, well known Pikachu, especially now. Yeah. A lot of people didn't. Uh, they really just think Isam, Isam, Isam. And it's funny too because even that day, I was actually I was had the chance, uh, the privilege of commentating one of Radea's matches, and yes. I was like, yeah, you guys don't know, man. Like there are other Pikachu's out there that are pretty damn incredible, and people just aren't looking at them yet. But they're doing a lot of work. Um, obviously, there's Captain L, yes. who's the one I was talking about at the time. But right at right there, like he sh showcased that he's up at the level as well, and he's just very, very competent. Really good play, and he was the only one to take a set from Nairo. And then after his, Nairo just ran through and literally destroyed like Tweak, Void, Komuro Kiri. Like uh, I know he played Rich Brown, yep. Zero twice. Like some of these iconic names we think of when we're Leo. thinking top five, top ten. <laughs> Leo, Leo, second best player in the world. Absolutely. With Bowser. Yes. Three one. Yeah. MK Leo with Bowser. And this, Who else is bringing Bowser <laughs> in top eight? No one. That's just him. No one. And you have it's funny see because sometimes I, I felt like there was a brief time period where people were like, man, maybe this is just working against kind of like only high level players. And then in terms of a top level player that his Bowser's are effective on, maybe it's just tweak. Right? Everyone else, uh, I don't know about these characters. Mm -hmm. But King Koopa. Yeah, he has a set off <laughs> of Zero now. Yeah. Set off of Leo, multiple sets off of Tweak. Yeah. Uh, 
Sal Zanotto. Yep. He has top uh, level wins with a character that people just, I don't know, maybe see him like as a niche like counter yeah. character that would, like you said, only really thrive in like mid-level play. This guy is pulling it out and securing top eight tournament S class wins. Like, yeah, man. I don't know. Nyro's, body, Nyro's on it, man. Yeah, he is definitely on it, man. And I, it's crazy. This guy, again, a lot of people have said this, myself included, that when when Nairo's on top, it's also supposed to be like Smash 4 is on top. Yeah, he's definitely, his <laughs> he's play like style in general S. is very exciting. Mm -hmm. It uh, brings a lot of like, maybe, a lot of people maybe see Smash 4 maybe as a slow like, defensive type game that's mm -hmm. capable of all these crazy explosive like combos. And Nairo definitely just shuts that idea down yeah. like completely. Uh, so when he does well, it's like not even that it's expected just from the play being so, you know, uh, optimal mm -hmm. and up there it's also just really pleasing to watch even if you're not like super deep into uh yeah. the smash Bros. thing so yeah. he brings a lot to the table yeah absolutely man just very very talented player so it's a great news for smash 4 but also at super smash con uh there was something else i was making kind of a ruckus out there and that was icons combat arena okay and so this game absolutely incredible a lot of people are really excited because a little backstory you guys don't know these guys are you know a lot of these guys are old school smashers uh very like solid members on the scene came together and they were able to create this great title and a lot of people are really excited to see smash go to the esports side of yes. things to have it at that kind of level and it's because like it's in general i say smash but that's what we really think about when we talk about platform fighters but icons if it has its way and does what it can do we could see actually an actual true rival come out of the mist that can actually go against the fame and fortune we've seen for the Smash Brothers series. Yes, uh, the gameplay itself uh, borrows a lot from Melee and some Smash 4 uh, mechanics are in there as well. So if you are familiar with those games, you can just jump into the game and feel like comfortable with the mechanics. It's not like you have to learn a whole different like tech skill thing like that. Me personally, uh, I'm not like a super big like Melee player, but uh, I jumped in the game first time, like, it was a little bit wonky, but the more I started to play it, it felt really smooth, and mm -hmm. it was really enjoyable to play. It has really good combo system, like, mm -hmm. the characters are unique. Yeah. That's the one thing that I feel like people might not realize about Smash that makes it such a, like, widely accessed game is the characters are just, you feel an attachment to them, you know? Right, right. And uh, Icons here showing their own, like, original, like, all original characters. Mm -hmm. They all have, they have their own unique tendencies, very similar to like you would say maybe Overwatch or mm -hmm. like League of Legends. Right, that's right. what a lot of people really get drawn to those big games yep. because all the characters feel like special in some way. Exactly, so exactly. Yeah, they're definitely. doing a lot of cool things for platform fighters that we yeah. haven't really seen yet. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I've had time to sit down with the developers. I was able to sit down with them a little bit uh, before I kind of uh, became like that open playtest to showcase everyone on the floor like they had at SmashCon. And uh, throughout the times I had been able to play it, it's just like, it's it solves so many issues some people may have with uh, current platform fighters. And it really just makes it, brings them, you know, to a modern speed, a modern look. Uh, the esports style, like I said, like kind of the Overwatch vibe that you kind of see, the league as the things that have been very successful because they, they've been able to create characters who didn't have a background and aren't as iconic as, say, like Mario and all stuff, but already they've become almost like, and no pun intended, instant icons. And that's a beautiful thing. When you are able to make characters in that sense, that's going to motivate people to be invested in your game. And then you look at the gameplay. And now a lot of people. They're like, oh, the animations, the aesthetics aren't there. It's an alpha game. I talked to these guys, the developers. I know, as far as I know, they told me they're aware of this stuff. This stuff is already being fixed on. Like, like it's being, it's going to be improved. Yes. And so these, they already know that. They're already working on that. That's just a process of the game making. But they've been very transparent, which is why we have an alpha build we can actually play already. When you most titled, actually want to even showcase the alpha build to you yet. And you probably see it later down the line. But that's because these guys are really focused on making the gameplay good. And let yes. me tell you, the gameplay is clean. You have dash dancing. You have wave dash, obviously, because wave dash games. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> that would you actually know? be a pretty big slap. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, um, they have, like, all those little tendencies. They have ledge play, which a lot of platform fighters, they don't really get 
oh, down yeah. too well. Yeah, you some of them don't a, even have legends. You have rivals of Aether yeah. completely revamped the, the whole ledge play, I believe. Yeah, because they don't have it because it's actually really hard to code ledges. It's actually really hard. A lot of people don't know that. So sometimes people will say it's like, oh, it's a design decision. Eh, it's, like, it, it's hard. It's actually hard to code ledges, which is why usually um, a lot of the platform fighters we have currently, uh, some of the indie ones don't really have ledges. Uh, but nonetheless, it's like the game is really, really clean. A lot of com- There's a lot of characters right now that, and this is kind of where a lot, some people may have gripes, where they may feel close to uh, their like Smash incarnations. But they have enough unique tools and unique feel to the point where there's definitely some meat and potatoes where you can explore outside of the familiarity that you're going to have that's going to draw you to play the game yes. and see what the game is going to look like in the first place. Yeah, you, we had a short conversation about it uh, last night when you were saying, okay, well, there are these characters that are similar to their Smash counterparts because they want people to be able to like jump in with a character and immediately, like, they can feel comfortable right. and familiar with how they play. But, you know, getting past that, there's just a whole more deeper, like, complex uh, you know, side to the characters yeah. that you can bring out and really show that hey, they actually have a lot more tools to separate them from, like, these Smash characters. Yeah, and absolutely. That's, that's a great thing. Yeah, so I think it's really good. I'm really excited for those guys. And I think they're just going to be doing, you know, so much more. So definitely, guys, go ahead and check them out. Um, they have their YouTube channel, uh, Wave Dash Games. And, like, you know, obviously, Icon's Comic Arena go follow them on their social media i'm really excited to see what they're going to do because they have an esports vision for a platform fighter and it plays like anything we'd want from a platform fighter yes and as long as they get the polish on it it's nice as long as they continue to trend a lot of the newer characters like raymer and zana you can see them they're very different archetypes than we've seen before if they continue that trend and have the familiarity and then have the new stuff and have the polish and have the esports the costumes all these kind of things oh, yeah. then Trust me, this game is going to succeed. But uh, let's talk about one more thing. Because there's a lot of cheers and joy and all those things happened. And, you know, a lot of people were excited that Nairo was able to win uh, two sets from zero. Yes. But the interesting thing about it is he did it with zero also, of course, having his coach. Yes. Okay, so um, in case you guys aren't, Aware of the latest news, mid-set coaching has been banned in the official Smash 4 recommended rule set. Uh, something that might come as a big shock to a lot of people is because as abruptly as like coaching was introduced, mm-hmm. just as quickly now it's it's removed. And yeah. the short time it was a part of the metagame, it actually changed a lot uh, in the short time it was around. Like yeah. the dynamic of sets completely was different from what we had before. And now they're kind of just going back on that. Uh, judging by the reasoning, uh, they definitely gave uh, states to, okay, well, it's difficult for lesser established players to get the same level of, like, these top-tier coaches. So mm-hmm. when they're pitted against a top player who has, like, an amazing coach, they have to kind of just pick from the crowd. And already, they can, I guess they feel like they're at a disadvantage, you know? Yeah, some of them, I think it's funny because some of them do, and then some of them just feel like, it hurts them. Some of them feel like, okay, now I'm having this person tell me stuff that I should do, and then I'm doubting myself on certain things. And then, like, uh, you have situations where people just seem like they want to talk. That you see them more so. They'll be on stage more so. Seems like they're doing, you know, a lot of crazy things. Of course, uh, one of the people here, one of the main coaches that people see, yeah. Pierce Seven D, <laughs> uh, like I said before, Zero's coach, and you see from a lot of people. They have just, what they've seen from coaching in this short period of time, they don't like. Uh, Sue has said stuff. He's oh, yeah. uh, on a mic at Frostbite. He said, I don't think coaching should be a thing. I think it takes away from what we're looking at overall. I, I think it takes away from that one-on-one uh, mental battle. Uh, granted, you see it in uh, actual sports, as in MMA. You see it in um, in boxing. All those kinds of things. So you do even, have this. Even other think, esports. Yeah, well. exactly. So, you know, it's something that's common. But it seems that right now... In Smash, doesn't seem like they've necessarily found a place. And I always found that uh, intriguing because I think, I, I understand why. I think right now we don't have necessarily the great logistics to run coaching the way we want to do it. And I think that a lot of people right now aren't utilizing it the way they should be. It's been more seen maybe sometimes as just like a stall. Uh, uh, we've seen it doing yes. a lot more than that. Uh, we've seen ways where it's just people, like, it just seems like it's just 
elongating these sets unnecessarily. No one's even trying to do anything. And so people are having a lot of problems with that. I know a lot of Tios are concerned overall. So, I mean, look, I was, like I said, I am someone who actually thinks that coaching can be done, missing coaching be done. Ultimately, that is not the crux of what a coach is, though. Yes. A true coach is going to be someone who's sitting down with them, training them, bettering, leveling up for leveling up this person until this moment. And someone can still do coaching before a set starts. So this is not to say this is the end of coaching. No. Um, I think it's uh, definitely a blow to publicizing coaching. But I do think that people can take another avenue in terms of doing so. I felt that there were certain instances where I feel like coaches seemed more concerned about being on stage, mm. doing all these things, than rather than actually going ahead and doing what is they need to do as far as being a coach. And uh, I think a lot, obviously these coaches are trying to build their brand and do everything and stuff too, but it has to be done to a certain extent. And I feel like the way that certain people have been about coaching has been um, just... Some of these coach, some of the ways these coaches are, it seems like almost kind of narcissistic. You know, mm. I not, I know they're not doing it nationally in that way, but it's like it's becoming less about the player that they're trying to lift up. Yeah, and I think that sometimes can be an issue. And I've seen that on multiple fronts. I've seen that on the top all the way down to the low level. So um, this is something that I think that is permeated the community, and it's left a bad taste in people's mouth. Yes, uh, I can definitely agree with that. But uh, again, I'm, I'm I'm with you 100%. Mid-set coaching does not uh, take away from like the actual coach's job. It it's what people don't see mm-hmm. on the stream. It's when they're back at like their place, like looking over the vods, going over like where they messed up, yes. l- going over their potential bracket, looking over matches they have to study, even uh, like mindset uh, mm-hmm. advice. Just making sure they're always in the correct, like, positive mindset to actually play in a competitive environment. There's just so many more things. So, takeaway miss at coaching, I feel like if you already, like, the Zeros, uh, uh, Korean, Zeke even, those guys are still going to be working just as hard behind the scenes that they've been doing before mm-hmm. to keep these players, like, where they should be. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sure, again, these guys will still get credit where credit's due. And ultimately, I feel like this should be a motivation to people who do believe that mid-set coaching could, should come back and could come back, that for everyone to kind of rally under people, make a proper system, showcase what coaching can do overall, and then we can start seeing uh, some progression to maybe uh, the return of mid-set coaching under better circumstances. Yes, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Maybe just it was a little bit too soon for a lot of right. people because, like I said, it came really like abruptly, and yeah. it was only zero at first. Yeah. So that just forced everyone to immediately like, okay, now we have to start like stepping up and like trying to find right. legitimate coaches, right. and then make a strategy of like how we can, like, like what I what I saw was just coaches would have like pre notes that they have mm-hmm. like short things that they can go yeah. over quickly in right. like thirty seconds, yeah, and then they just review this really quick like right. that. Um, I felt like since it came so quickly, just a lot of people just had to kind of scramble and figure out the whole thing. Right, And it right. led to like a lot of awkward moments and just miss uh, implementation of True. Uh, mid-set coaching. So. True, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Vault. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Again, as always, it's a pleasure having you here, brother. And we're going to do... Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and look at a new foil of peers, we're going to be doing a section. I'm actually going to be talking with Coach Zeke, discussing with him about how he Great. feels about coaching, uh, what he thinks is important, uh, things that he feels that people need to be looking at towards in the metagame. 